What do you think is the the goal of the European Union as it's going right power. now? Power. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Make no mistake because, about it. But because of power. I mean, Blair is very good on this. Oh yeah. You know, Tony Blair said recently the European Union was started off as a peace project. It's not about that anymore. It's now about power. It's about the desire to be a global superpower, and that is the biggest factor that drives and dominates people. I mean, Mr. Barroso, the Commission President, yeah. said a couple of years ago, we are building the first ever non-imperial empire. So it's all about being big. Oh, yeah? And, 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 and big can be dangerous. You think so? Yes, I do. I mean, you know, just wanting to be big, just wanting to be bigger than America and stronger than America. It's not dissimilar uh, to the Kaiser's thinking. Uh, with the German-British rivalry before 1914. Mm -hmm. This kind of mentality, this wanting to be top dog, um, is not something I think is terribly good for global security. No, but what they say right now is we need to be bigger because this time asks for a bigger institution that has more control. Yeah, which is total rubbish and completely flies in the face of everything that is happening in the world. Do you know, in 1945, mm -hmm. there were 55 countries in the world. Mm -hmm. There are now 230. Mm -hmm. And what is happening right across the world is big states particularly artificial states, mm -hmm. are breaking down into smaller entities based on the principle of national self-determination. The mm -hmm. only part of the globe where we're taking countries and trying to merge them into one is what's happening in the European Union. Do you think we're heading towards a federal state, the United States of Europe? Well, <clears throat> if it was a federated structure that was proposed, it would be very much better Mm -hmm. than what is happening here now. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the difference between... Well, the difference between, you know, I mean, in a federation, mm -hmm. there is quite a clear separation of powers in terms of what the centre does and what the uh, constituent parts do. America, of course, is quite a good example, isn't it? That mm -hmm. There are some powers that are given to Washington, but the states themselves have enormous ability to decide, you know, what age you can drink, uh, whether you uh, put people into the electric chair or, or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But in America, there's great power. What's being proposed here is not a federated structure. What is being proposed here is a unitary, centralised form of power. Hmm. So where do you think the, the project went from a peace initiative to... I think, that, I mean, clearly, that's an evolution over time. And it's quite understandable to think that France and Germany should have been sitting around a table in the 1950s mm -hmm. and trying to forge some relationships. And after all, I mean, trade uh, always is the best way of starting. Well, trade and democracy are the two great ways of stopping countries going to war. Right. You know, had, had the Weimar Republic worked, yeah. And had Germany stayed a democracy, yeah. World War II wouldn't have happened. Right. So it isn't the existence of nation states that causes war, it's where there's an absence of democracy in Europe hmm. that we see examples of war. So I can't tell you exactly when this happened, but what I can tell you mm -hmm. is the moment at which I changed politically. You know, I came here in 1999, I'm a veteran now, and when I came here, I thought Britain was a square peg in a round hole. Because of our history, our geography, common law, for a whole host of reasons, our relationship with the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. I didn't think Britain fitted inside this union. Right. But I thought, if the rest of you want it, that's fine. You know, off you go. You do it. And 2005, one week in 2005, changed all of that. We had a European constitution. The French said no. The Dutch overwhelmingly, with a very loud, sharp, Eurosceptic bang, yeah. said no. And I thought, we've changed it. It's all going to be different from yeah. now on. So do we. Yeah, yeah. well, that's right. Yeah. You know, we've scored a great victory. Yeah. And yet within weeks, they'd rebranded the Constitution as the Lisbon Treaty. They hadn't surrendered a single power that had been in the original document. Was that within weeks already? Yeah. Within weeks. So they had like a backup plan already, you think, there? Yeah? yeah? Of course they did. Yeah. Nothing stops these people. Just took out the flag and the... Uh, yeah, in theory. Beethoven's Night. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. It's, yeah, but it's back again now. Oh, yeah, it's back again. You know? yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. so it's very it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's very interesting. It yeah. may be a good piece of music. Yeah. It's been yeah. much abused. Yeah. And what's really interesting yeah. is that the dynamic that is now behind the European project is, in fact, a new form of nationalism itself. Euro nationalism. You want to see them here when they play the European anthem. Oh, yeah? They will stand ramrod to attention. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, so for me, the fact they decided willfully to ignore those referendums and to continue with the project of political union, mm -hmm. that was the moment at which I became an opponent of the whole thing. And I now don't just want Britain out of, out of political union with Europe. I want Europe out of the European Union. Right. 
they've hijacked the word Europe. The flag, the anthem, Herman van Rompuy, that's not Europe. No, but if you criticize uh, the European Union, uh, that can quickly make you like, uh, you know, like a, a nationalist almost. Because, well, they uh, can try and do that. Yeah. And they've tried to do that. Yeah. But, but they're not winning with me. No. You know, I mean, I honestly will lay claim to you here today that I'm a greater, I'm a greater European than they are. Oh, yeah? Because I think I know what Europe is and they don't. What is Europe then? Europe is the most diverse set of people within a small geographical area that exists anywhere in the world. And it's actually what makes Europe the most fascinating, interesting continent on the whole of the earth. But we should recognize right. the amazing differences that exist. Mm -hmm. And we should want to have a Europe where individual, sovereign, democratic nation states sit around the table together, trade together, be friends together, be good next door neighbors. We can agree sensible common minimum standards. We can agree, you know, trading conditions. We can do all of that. Yeah. But we don't need to build an empire with a parliament, a commission and a court and tens of thousands of, bureau of, of bureaucrats. We, we don't need those things. They're building an empire, you have this feeling? There's no question, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Yeah. You know, they, they, they are trying to subsume the nation state within a new identity. Uh, they're seeking to become a global power and they don't care what we think. How do they make the nation states weaker, in, in essence? How do they do that? By removing the supremacy of law. You know, when you join the European Union, mm -hmm. The highest court in your land mm -hmm. is no longer your own Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. It's the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg. It's as simple as that. So it's not a cooperative structure. It's a structure where you actually surrender the ability of your parliament and your courts to be the highest authorities in your land. And if you think about it, actually what that means is you're destroying democracy. Right. When I mean, there is nothing, you know, all the while you're members of the European Union, there is nothing the Dutch or British voter can do uh, to change open, bo uh, open border immigration, uh, climate change legislation, employment legislation, all the things that we should vote on in general elections and debate in our countries have now ceased to be even discussed. Yeah. Because we've transferred the government um, of our countries here. Yeah, we spoke with members of parliament uh, from Holland and they say that um, it's very difficult for them to really understand what's going on and many of them say that it's kind of beyond their scope in a way, that they are more busy with daily things than really understanding the very, you know... Uh, yes, difficult. I mean our politicians, it's very interesting, I mean, yeah. the, the House of Commons in the 1960s yeah. used to discuss um, nuclear weapons, um, you know, huge global debates that went on. Um, in Westminster, and that's what they did. And now our MPs are more like local councillors, you know, dealing with people's problems with drains uh, and the street not being cleared, uh, cleaned properly. Yeah. Uh, and all the really vital debates about how a national economy is planned and run uh, and managed, uh, Parliament doesn't even discuss that anymore. The one area of European policy that hasn't yet become centralised in Brussels mm -hmm. is foreign policy. And because of that, the House of Commons had a vote on the war in Syria. Yeah. And that vote has stopped a war from happening. And I can't think of a better example of why having sovereign uh, national parliaments is actually rather better uh, than entrusting a group of, un of unelected bureaucrats to decide not just what we do to our industries, but whether we go to war or not. Right. I heard somebody say that it uh, is policy of, of the European Union to try to make um, regions stronger, supporting you know, languages and, and, and regions to weaken the nation states. Of course. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. It's quite yeah, a yeah. deliberate tactic. Yes. Well, they, uh, you, you must understand yeah. the people that run this hate nation states. They want to abolish nation states and they see regionalism as being a way of helping to break down national identity. And that's been here for decades. I mean, the, 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 there is nothing new in that. You know, the Committee of the Regions is a well-established part of the European Union. Make the regions dependent on Brussels yeah. and thereby further bypassing the link yeah. between the region and the national parliament. That's certainly going on. I mean, yeah, that's not conspiracy theory. I know. That is happening. Well, it's funny because, for instance, Catalonia wants to get rid of the bigger power Spain. You know, they want to be independent, but they want to exchange it for a bigger power in a way. Well, I mean, this is the whole argument in Scotland. Yeah. You know, the Scottish National Party want yeah. to kiss goodbye to Westminster yeah. and say, Mr. Barroso, please come in and run the country. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense no. at all. If the European Commission is not working on behalf of the U European people, then who are they working for? The project. The project. The project. Yes. 
It's been called the project since the 1950s. But that sounds like the Soviets, in a way. Doesn't it just? It does. It does. It yes. Does, yeah. Yes, amazing, isn't it? Gorbachev yeah. said at a dinner in London about 10 years ago, he said, I fail to understand why you in Western Europe are seeking to recreate what we've just torn down in Eastern Europe. I only did say that. <laughs> he did. Yeah. And yeah. there are very strong similarities. Yeah. You know, a centralised government, economic planning, um, um, elections to a parliament that didn't really have any power. Overregulate everything, yeah. Control everything, believe yeah. the state knows best, uh, yeah. limit the... Limit the ability of the individual entrepreneur yeah. to do well yeah. um, and drill into everybody this idea that the state is everything. Okay. I'm not in politics for the usual reasons. Hello. You know, I'm not your politician that gets elected because he wants to be a minister or, you know, no? or, or wants rank or so elevation. We're not see I'm you. a campaigner. We don't see you here in, in six years with a, a small crown on your head? Like as the, the, the successor of Barroso? I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping, you might be worse than I'm hoping <laughs> that in six, I'm hoping that in six years' time, yeah. you know, you'll find me out in the middle of the English Channel, trying to catch fish, uh, having given up with politics, and with a Europe um, that is a far more sensible, far more de democratic, and better place than it is today. And I believe it's now within our grasp. Yeah, I think the electors right across the north, south, east, and west of Europe have woken up to something which is that the European project has been built without their consent. It is not acting in their interests, and it's time we had something better.